Moving to a new place is generally pretty expensive, but you got lucky. You see, you got a great deal on an old abandoned trap house. So you get settled in your new digs, check out the graffiti on the wall, and all of a sudden you notice something. A massive locked vault. What could possibly be locked away in a safe in an old gang hideout? Money, drugs, dead bodies. I know this is all sounding very familiar, but don't worry, Oprah does not get involved this time. And this time, there actually is something in that safe. So on this episode of Tales from the Internet, I want to talk about the original locked Reddit vault. I just want to let you guys know that my partnership with Verizon is still going on. When you make a purchase from the link in my description, Verizon will send you $100 worth of my merchandise. Included in the packages, the Wang Logo sweatshirt in black, the gray Shiba tee, a Wang mug, the long sleeve version of the shirt I'm wearing right now. Once again, being douchebag and wearing my own shirt. The mechanical Wang decal and the Shiba decal. Just click the link in my description when you get there, it'll ask you to fill in your email and phone number. From there, you'll be able to browse electronic devices like smart homes, speakers, headphones. And they sent me that spotlight camera that I was talking about, just in time because some Korean church ladies uh, woke me up the other day, screwed up my whole sleeping schedule. I wouldn't have answered for it if I had this installed. There we go. Goodbye, Korean church ladies. Thank you, Verizon. After you make your purchase, Verizon will send you an email where you can fill out your sizes and shipping information for the merch. But anyway, thank you to Verizon for setting this up, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Reddit is home to countless boxes, vaults, and safes whose contents are unknown. So much so, there's now a subreddit called r slash what's this thing. And actually, the story I'm about to tell you is why this subreddit was created in the first place. It begins with a post on March 13th of 2013 by a user named Don't Stop Me Smee. A friend of mine moved into a former drug house and found this huge safe. How do we get it open? And he linked to an imager album, Garage Door. My friend just moved into a former gang house. Upstairs looks pretty normal, but the garage under the house has heavy bars on all the windows and a thick steel door. The safe. Notice the power supply leading into it at the top. The handle looks like it's been ground off. Closer shot of the dial. Surely, the tape has something to do with the combination? Is there any way I can get into this thing? I like how this house came complete with its own Resident Evil style puzzle. Side shot of the vault. This thing is pretty big, and there are some thick girders running through it. I've already asked, and I'm not allowed to jackhammer it. Front. I need to know what's in this vault. Safe crackers get at me. Commenters immediately had flashbacks to the last big Reddit mystery extravaganza. Oh god, it's happening again. No one call Oprah and we should be fine. And some other concerns were also brought up. For example, what if the gang members who previously occupied this house came back to get the contents of their safe, but they found it empty? They'd surely take it out on poor Don't Stop Me Smee. Can you imagine for a second thousands of Redditors coming together to egg on another Redditor to do something that leads to him getting wasted in a gangland shooting? Then there's the issue of who actually owns the contents of the safe. You see, the guy who moved into that house was only renting it, so technically the contents of that safe might belong to the landlord. If they found anything good in there, he could easily turn around and say, hey, you're stealing my shit. Either way, Reddit quickly got to work, and a user named NetDigger identified the lock on the safe very quickly as being one of the 6600 or 6700 type locks from Sargent and Greenleaf. And according to their site, they did not possess the combinations to any of their locks. So contacting them would be to no avail. Additionally, it was supposed to take two full hours for an expert to crack this lock. But that wouldn't stop Reddit from doling out advice. First of all, please don't take any kind of torch to it. It is a Sergeant and Greenleaf dial 6630, I believe. What will most likely have to happen is it might be able to be dialed open using a special stethoscope. If that doesn't work, then if you have access to a boroscope, then you can look up the drill placement for the dial ring and you can drill through and see where the glasses line up so the fence can drop in and the door can be opened. You have to be very, very careful 
not to drill through the back plate of the lock because you'll punch the back cover off and trigger the relocker and then it becomes a huge problem. If you could send me a closer pic of the dial and any writing on the door, I should be able to get you some more information. Yeah, that sounds really simple. I'm sure this guy was going to get right on that. There are also some much simpler suggestions, for example, getting a professional locksmith to do it. A suggestion that Smee was at first into, but gradually began to ignore. Ultimately, Don't Stop Me Smee would create an entire new subreddit specifically for this mystery. Oh, I know Reddit's history with safes and hard drives, etc. If somebody comes up with a useful way to get into this thing, I'll try it tomorrow and post pics. Fuck it, I'll even start a subreddit for it if you're still not convinced. r slash what's in this thing. Although specifically created for this one mystery, the subreddit would quickly become a hub for all things mystery boxes and safes. Tens of thousands of people joined right away. And within three days of the subreddit's creation on March 19th, a redditor named Safe is Big found another mystery safe. And after hiring a locksmith, it turned out that Safe is Big did have something in his safe. Binders filled with old magic cards. Another redditor, Jubilation Lee, went through the trouble of putting together a spreadsheet with the values of every single card in this collection. By her calculations, it was worth as much as $32,000. The next day, the whole thing was exposed as a hoax. The original debunking post is now deleted and not archived, but essentially what it entailed was going to the YouTube channel that the video of the safe opening was uploaded to. The username attached to the channel was then connected to another Reddit account, which was connected to an OkCupid okay account, which was then connected to forum accounts. And ultimately, these forum posts led all the way back to a post in 2010. And in 2010, this person had posted the exact same collection. This new subreddit is not off to a good start, but Don't Stop Me Smee was determined to get to the bottom of this mystery, and that was in spite of the fact that a few people pointed out that it was likely that this safe, even if it had contents at some point, was emptied out between tenants. Since this was a well-known gang-slash-drug house, police would have known about it and at some point have seen the safe, gotten inside of it, emptied it out, and left. So if there is ever something interesting in there, money, drugs, a body, it's probably gone now. Because of that, some people suggested that Smee just, you know, plant something nice in there to satisfy Reddit. Just a little bit of a fake out, you know, like, when you're a kid and your mother buys you Mario 2 and says, Oh, your dad sent it, even though you know he didn't really send it to you, she's just, you know, making stuff up. But you play along with it because an effort was made. That's what they were suggesting. And there are also some actual reasonable suggestions from people who had experience working with locks. Things like default codes that that type of lock might have had. Oh yeah, and he also bought an endoscope, which I thought an endoscope was just something that goes up your butt, but apparently that can go up any hole you would like to explore. He then announced his intentions to stream his attempts on the now defunct Justin.tv. And this move made a lot of people theorize that perhaps this guy was some kind of a scammer. Maybe he was building up publicity for something, maybe he was just trying to become e-famous off of this. But despite those concerns, the streams drew a couple thousand people. The VODs of these streams are long gone, but the reviews from those days do not look so hot. It's like 10 minutes of him recording himself typing on the computer, then another 10 minutes of him complaining he doesn't have enough cable. Did he really think that hole for conduit was going to be big enough for him to put anything through it into the vault? Then he tries putting the endoscope into the keyhole? Then he says they're going to try drilling a hole later after he has consistently said there could be no drilling whatsoever? Don't drill the fucking door, idiot! Drill the sides if you're going to drill. Now he wants to trigger the locker panel on purpose. Sigh. What an idiot. There was also growing suspicion over him refusing to hire a locksmith. It almost made it seem like he either had something to hide or he was trying to stretch this out for as long as possible. And these suspicions would come to a head after somebody dug up a post that he had made four months prior to the original post. Answering a question on Ask Reddit, in Reddit's history, what has been the seemingly best post that has ended up being exposed as bullshit? Don't stop me, Smee. Perhaps the safe story was the oldest one I read while lurking. I can't remember enough about it to search for a link though. Sorry guys, smiley face. Edit, there is also a similar one about a hidden hard drive. 
this discovery was posted to r slash what's this thing and then... I think it's pitchfork time. A post would be made on r slash karma court, prosecuting don't stop me smee for his crimes against the sanctity of reddit karma. Basically, the consensus had become that this guy was full of shit. And this was when he would give his most detailed account of what had happened. Ladies and gentlemen of the distinguished karma court, I humbly thank you for your time and patience. My New Zealand time zone means that much of the world is offline by the time I wake up or finish work, and usually I try to wait till 3am to post something so it is visible. Please allow me to apologize for the delay in replying. All PMs to me are currently being buried and I'm trolling back through my inbox right now trying to weed out the useful information. It has been a complete nightmare for me over the last few weeks pushing my account to an almost unusable state. I am receiving a mountain of messages and comment replies on an hourly basis, and as a relative newbie to Reddit, I find this extremely distressing and intimidating. As a former message board moderator, I am used to writing long replies then logging off, and my private messages are usually non-existent. Let's get to the safe. This was an idea I had after a long, boozy night staring at the vault door in my friend's basement. I slung my camera over my shoulder and told him I thought r slash lockpicking could probably help out. I admit I posted the album to r slash picks in the hope of getting maximum exposure, but at that point, and still, I had no idea how karma or fuzzing worked, and thought that 2000 karma only meant 2000 people. When over 20,000 started bombarding the subreddit within hours, I really started panicking and I was lucky to have a great moderator team step in to save me in the early hours. The whole point of the subreddit was supposed to be somewhere I could collect all the tips I was getting from people on the thread. They were coming through too fast for me to read them and save them, and I thought it would be a great idea. Unfortunately, I had never set one up before or even talked to someone that had, so I had no clue about what rules to set up or even how to edit the sidebar. As a result, the first 48 hours were a disaster. With some careful modding, the team has managed to prune the submissions down to safe related stuff, but we are still under constant abuse. On the issue of verification, I have live streamed several times from the vault and every time it has caused more trouble. The people that missed the live stream accuse me of not doing one, and the people that see it complain that I didn't open the vault and that I'm just wasting time slash creating hype. I do not want hype. It is the last thing I need. Every step of the way, I have stressed that I expect this to be a project which will take time and effort, and not just a one hour make reddit happy venture. Now, I implore the court. What can I do? The hate mail and messages are getting me down and yes, I did consider disappearing for a while. I have scaled back my account's activity drastically, which breaks my heart as I love this place. But one thing I have learned is not to feed the trolls. My friends and I are not very internet-y people. I use my Facebook like an email box and report all games and apps I see as spam. I hate cat pictures and funny YouTube videos from 11 year olds with helium voices, and I enjoy animated discussions with chatters in the JTV sidebar and seeing my torrents at appropriate hours of the night. Please help me. Any advice you can give me would be hugely appreciated. Yeah, yeah, open the fucking safe, I know. As of 1 p.m. NZ time, 9 p.m. EDT, thank you for your time. Sincerely, DSMS. He also explained his hesitation to contact the locksmith. It's not really my identity that I want kept quiet. It's the fact that if anything's in there, the cops get cold. If he's an honest safecracker. And it might get tricky to prove that we didn't in fact put it in there in the first place. Bear in mind, although my friend rents the place, and in our mind we reckon the safe should be counted as a stuck cupboard that needs opening, very loose definition of course, and it's tricky to explain to locksmiths who actually owns it. Consider this. Hi Mr. Actual Accredited Safe Expert, I'm a random guy who doesn't want to show ID, and I don't need to get into a huge vault in a house that isn't mine. No, we didn't lose the combo, we found it like that. No, the safe isn't ours. Oh, we can pay you. I have a huge anonymous fund of digital money given to me by hundreds of anonymous people on the internet. Ultimately, r slash karma court founds him innocent of all charges. From this point on, he would leave a couple more updates about the safe, although significantly more sporadic.
But things came to a bit of a head when he drunkenly made a now-deleted post on r slash self. The post was entitled, R.I.P. Grandma, Say Hi to Poppy for Me. Although the body of the post is now deleted and not archived, I think we can use context clues to figure out what it's about. Most of the people in the thread were consoling him and condemning the people who were giving him an extra hard time about the safe. However, there's one now deleted, heavily downvoted post that he replied to with his thoughts on the entire situation. Fuck that stupid safe. I wish I never found it. I want my fucking Reddit account back. The rest of the internet is shit. I just wanted to talk to somebody. Frowny face, with a tear. He would make a couple more update posts about the safe before disappearing entirely. Months passed, and not a single word was heard about it from him. But then, on December 23rd of 2013, months after the original discovery of the safe, a new post was made on r slash pics. Not by Don't Stop Me Smee, but by another user, Mantis NZL. The safe. Some people doubted our resolve, but I said it would be open by New Year's. Attached was an image realm that showed the vault being opened. Can't wait to see what's inside. A big spooky spider. At least it's better than Oprah's leftover pennies. And as it turned out, this guy had no actual connection to OP. He was just the guy that happened to rent the house next. He found the safe in the basement and he was like, wait a second. He put the pieces together and it's like, oh shit. That's the Reddit safe. It was a letdown. I was hoping for a dead body or some sort of mob stash. Instead, it's just a whole lot of spiders and the shattered hopes and dreams of thousands of Redditors, myself included. I'll check it over more thoroughly after a few beers. Earned them after that. Is anyone able to date this? Why it took you so long to find an angle grinder and a fucking crowbar? I'm not the original guy who posted it. I'm the new guy that moved into the house and just realized that this was a thing three weeks ago. As for Don't Stop Me Smee, he returned to this thread for the festivities. Fuck yeah! Does this mean I get to have my account back now? Oh my god, it's original OP, get him! He didn't stick around for this long, but to this day, his creation, r slash what's this thing, remains Reddit's hub for all sealed, mysterious objects. But anyway, that's it for the story of the Reddit Mystery Vault. If you like this video, you should also check out my video on the secret Reddit hard drives, because the references they made to it in there, they didn't even know the whole story yet. Anyway, peace out.